Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And uh, we really appreciate it. Um, we'd like to go ahead and get started with the, the interview. Okay. You're okay with that? Let it be up. All right. Uh, introduction. We've done that. We've done that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bio, what is that? Uh, Just start with question okay. A. Okay, question mm -hmm. A. Where and where where and when were you born? I was born in uh, Grantville, Georgia in uh, August 1947. Okay. Who? And what, what day? August, August day. Night, so give us the... August 22nd, 22nd. 1947. Okay. And who were your parents? My parents was Joe and Emma Law. Okay. Thanks. Uh, mm -hmm. well, go ahead. Okay. I was saying yeah, that about your okay, sure. Were there uh, occupations? My father was a construction worker. Okay. And my mom, she worked at a at a uh, it's a factory. Okay. And, um, All right. Good. And they were both in. And I'm sorry. Where were they from? They was both from Grant, Grant Georgia. Mm -hmm. Georgia. Okay. Uh, my father was in World War Two. Oh, okay. So and my father's a... father was in World War One. Oh, okay. I said I'd throw that in there. Oh, yes. that's good. That's good. Uh, both in the army. Both in the, the army. army as well? okay. okay. And I'm sorry, just the last bit. Their names. So let's have their names. My father was Joe Lowe Jr. My father, father was Joe Lowe. Okay. Oh, and okay. so you're the third. I'm. I'm not a third, but oh, I'm just, just, okay. yeah, I was named after my mom and dad. My mother's name was Emma Jean. Uh huh. So they named. I was the only son. They named me Joe Jean. Okay. And by uh, right, I wasn't supposed to go to Nam because I have my father on the son. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, who are who who are your siblings? Their names and genders. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which uh, any serve did any of them serve in the military as well? No. Okay. Uh, you had siblings. Yes. So tell us their, their names, names and the, I have a, the birth order. So. My son. I have, I have three sons. No, no, your siblings, like your brothers. No, sisters and brothers. No okay. brothers. No brothers. Two sisters. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they, neither one of them went anywhere. Okay. Or are you the oldest? Or? I am between both of them. Oh, so you're the middle child. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and tell us your, your sister, your oldest, and then your youngest sister's name. My oldest sister's name was Gracie, Gracie B. Gracie. And my baby sister's name was Ben Ann. Ben Okay. And they never served in the military? No. What were you doing before you entered entered the service? I went to Lockheed, Georgia, in Mayweather. Oh yeah, Lockheed Martin. Yeah. Okay. Well, Lockheed. Okay. And so, did you so tell us about high school, growing up with your siblings, and then getting to Lockheed? So tell well, us a little bit. About we it. was. I guess we were sort of we was on the poor side down in a small town. You know, we didn't have that much. You know, but we had each other, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it was we it was we had food but you know it was we had food because at that particular time we had we had my father had a little like a little farm we had a garden and we had hogs believe it or not we had hogs and we made hogs down there you know and I was sort of glad to get out and die there when I <laughs> but uh, other than that it, it was sort of hard but it was fair. Okay. So okay. high school and high school. I went high school at Central High School in Nuna, and uh, it was it was nice. It was it was all black school. Mm -hmm. You know, at that time it wasn't integrated, uh, and uh, it uh, it I, I played in the band in high school. Okay. What instrument? I played the trombone mm -hmm. in high school. Okay. You know. And uh, I would have had a scholarship to Savannah State, but uh, I knew my father couldn't afford it. I knew my mom and daddy couldn't afford it, so you know, so I didn't pursue it. I really didn't. Okay. Any sports or anything like that? Or no. No sports? No okay, sports. just a band guy. I was a musician. A band, yeah. Huh? yeah. Did you sing too or just oh, play? No, 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 no singing. I couldn't, no singing. Play. I couldn't play a note. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get? How did you end up picking the trombone or being in the band? How well, at that particular time, uh, they needed some trombone players in the band, right. and it was about about five of us from around Grantville, and all us all us guys said we'd get together and play trombone. Okay. So, 
So y'all was a tight group. Was it a big band or were y'all pretty good? Like everybody knew y'all. Well, I mean, it was just y'all school comedy. band. That. Yeah, was school Did band. Y'all compete the against other, yeah. other bands. Was, or? I, I was lucky enough to be a number one trombone. That's when oh, I was. Okay. I got, got, yeah, the musician, uh, Mr. Peterman, he was a music man, and then he kept saying, "Joe, you need to go to Savannah. School. I can get you down there." You know, and I knew then it wasn't no. My father and mother couldn't afford to send me no college. You mm-hmm. know. So I just made the best out of it, you know. Okay. And when I finished high school, I just, I, I was lucky enough to go to the, the Capitol. And uh, I took the test for Lockheed, and I was able to get over there. Yeah. So you say you went to the Capitol, so they downtown? Were giving, yeah, downtown Georgia, Atlanta. Atlanta. Uh-huh. They were giving the test for Lockheed and the Capitol building downtown. Okay. Okay, that good. And so what did you do there at Lockheed? Well, we was in the, we prepared the airplane for for painting. We were hand cleaning them and and uh, did a little bit of everything to them. You know, really got prepared for painting, them, masking. I didn't paint, but if you looked at me, I it was a lot of paint around me, <laughs> right. smell stuff like that. But I really didn't want to paint. I really didn't because mm-hmm. it was hard on you. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> How long was you there? Did you, were you there a long time, or? Yeah, I worked there. Uh, that's where I got drafted from, Lockheed. Oh, okay. I worked there uh, from uh, '66 to '70. No, no, '66 to '67. Okay. Because I got drafted in '67. Right. So uh, I left there and in the army, and, and was a guy in the army. Had been in the army. Was, and he told me, he said, Joe, whatever you do, never volunteer for anything. And I took that in hand. Mm-hmm. I didn't volunteer for anything. Because it sounds good, but it's not. Mm-hmm. So I tell anybody that's going to and never volunteer for nothing. Just follow your orders. Just, just if, if, if you say they need some volunteer, don't raise your hand. Because <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good, but believe it or not, it's not. So when you got drafted, did you get drafted to the army, or was did you have your choice between the navy or no, marines, or they just like you going in the army? Uh, that was it. Okay. If you want to go to marine, you could once you got drafted, you could go to marine. You could volunteer for the marine corps, but you had to get out of there. You going somewhere? You going? Yeah. You could have volunteer for the marine or the navy. You, you once you get drafted, do you get to choose which well, branch I, you want you, to go into? Or? If you can talk to your uh, Enlistment man okay. that down there, he might be able to pull some strings, you know, to get you in the Marine Corps. And a lot of my friends did. They went to the Marine Corps, you know. Okay. And I didn't, I, I really didn't, I didn't, didn't want the Marine Corps. I really didn't want the Army either, but it just wasn't no thing that happened. And I, you know, it's, at that particular time, you know, if you didn't go in the Army, you go to jail. Oh, yeah. So I just took my chances. Okay. We covered that one. Mm-hmm. Cover that one. So number D for D. D. Okay, what happened when you departed for basic uh well for training camp during your early days in training? Well, we went there basic training for Ben in Georgia. Mm-hmm. It was it took about eight weeks, and uh, it was pretty rough camp because the drill sergeant put a lot of emphasis that a bunch of us were going to Vietnam and some of us would make it back and some of us wouldn't. So we needed to learn all we could while we was in basic training, you know. So they just about knew where we was going, you know, most of us were going over there. A lot of us made it, a lot of us didn't. So I was blessed enough to come back. Now was it integrated or was it in basic, in, yes. in basic was it yeah. blacks and whites is all yeah, in there? It was all black together. and white, yes. Now, was it tough working with them, or was it separate in there, or y'all kind of came together as... Well, we sort of like came together, you know, because uh, the sergeant, they put a lot of emphasis on, we're going to need each other. If we go to war, if we go to none, we're going to need each other. You know, it's not going to be a thing, it's white and black. We're going to need one person who has to watch the other person back. So, we kept that in mind all the time, you know, in order for us to get back, we had to be together, we had to stick together. Stuff like that, so that's what we know. So did you end up being somewhat friends with some of your? Oh yeah, some of your, oh yeah. I got 
You know, I had plenty of friends. Plenty of friends. yes. Of all races. All and, races. And Mexicans, races. Indians, and white, everybody. Yeah, huh? yeah. Just have no. It's like the common brown brotherhood. Yeah, right? That's right. It was just like one big happy family. Oh, okay. Cool. Do you recall your instructions? Instructions. Instructors. instructors. Okay. Oh, you recall your instructors? If so, what were they like? We can't hear the names or, or drill sergeant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, drill sergeant. I can't remember the drill sergeant, but they was rough on us. I mean, uh, I think by the rougher part we went through was, I mean, I'm in that net compared to what we went through. We went in there, you know, they they fired live bullets in base training. They fired live bullets over our head. You know, we had to crawl in the mud. We had to get a good feel of what was going on in the war zone. Oh, you know, okay. and they uh. They put uh, uh, what some kind of uh, just stuff. Uh, we just had prepared, you know. We had masks. They were some kind of gas. Yeah. Uh -huh. They sprayed yeah. gas and see how quick we could put our gas masks right. on. Was that Agent Orange? It, wasn't it? Well, it wasn't not there. Okay. Not they didn't. This is basic training. Oh, they did this <laughs> to us in basic training. Gets prepared right. in case we run into some gas over there in, uh, okay. in Vietnam. He said, so. Um, we done that, and I think that gas they sprayed, man, it had burned between your legs. I mean, it burnt. It was rough. If you didn't help them get your mask on, this some guy would run down. They were getting out of it. They were leaving here. They were running away from the gas, you know, because they couldn't get the gas mask on straight enough. So they were trying to get away from that gas. Okay. So that's what you remember. The basic training. Yeah. yeah that's that, that, part, that part. That part. Our basic. And the part where they were firing the live bullets over our head, a little red, and every fifth round was a tracer. And you saw this red line going over your head, you know, and you had to stick your head down because if you didn't, that was, that was it. That was it. I mean, those were real bullets, and they, they told you <laughs> if you stuck your head up out that dirt too far, you to get hit. You're going to get hit. Yeah. So. Okay. Did you receive any uh, specialized training? If so, what? No, just no no special training. Uh, just regular. They just she really got us regular training, regular hardcore training. That's that's that was it. And I think most hardcore training now is better than a lot of training that they do now in in, in the army. Um, but why do you think they were so hard? I look back on it now. It was to our benefit to save our lives because they drilled a lot of stuff in us. They they made us, you know, realize that if we didn't learn, that we was gonna die. Mm -hmm. They they put a lot of emphasis on us dying, you know. And we and they kept saying, if you don't do this right, you don't do this right, you might not come back, you know. And they also said that if it's probably ain't with two ways you're gonna come back. That's one in a plastic bag. And the agents, somebody in your immediate family dies, and I said, "Well, I don't, I didn't, I didn't want that to happen." You know, I, mm -hmm. I doing so didn't want to die, and then I didn't want nobody in my immediate family to die. You know, and I said, "Well, if I go numb, because at the time we didn't know exactly where we were going, but we had an idea we were going numb, because the guy in school told us, said, you guys going, you guys going numb.' Mm -hmm. So, you know, nobody knew then until the orders came down that we was going." But you had a good idea. Yeah, we had an idea we was going. Okay. Okay. How did you adapt to the military life, including the physical reprimands, food, and social life? Well, you get used to the food. Uh -huh. I mean, the food is it's not the best. But if you want to eat, you, you, at first, now at first I lost a lot of weight now because I couldn't get used to that food. But those three squares a day, uh, you you'll learn to get used to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not the best food in the world, but it'll, it's filling. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want to do, feel. You get three squares a day in a place to lay your head. And that's so it, wasn't, it. It wasn't mom's cooking. No, it was a long way from <laughs> <laughs> What about the physical reprimand? Well, it's a, down there, it was a lot different. I seen guys, I wouldn't really, you know, I wouldn't really reprimand that much because I, I tried to stay straight, you know. And, but, I seen guys go AWOL, you know, they couldn't take it. 
And when the guy went to AWOL, we all had to sit, we was out in the same company, we all suffered behind it, you know. Uh, so you don't want nobody to go AWOL, but if you do go AWOL and they stayed AWOL for a while, you start being trained all over again because he was coming back, they're going to bring it back eventually. Yeah. <laughs> so, you might as well. Yeah, so you might as well stick, stick yeah. it on out. Do it now or do it later. Did you have any troublemakers or anybody that got y'all in, in base training, like one one or two guys that kept the whole, you know, your whole platoon or whole group in trouble or had to clean bathrooms or any crazy stuff like that? We had a couple guys go AWOL okay. in base training, you know, but, uh, you know, our sergeant name was Sergeant Burns. That was his name, Sergeant Came Burns. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and uh, he was a he pretty rough sergeant. But uh, he he stayed on us a lot. He stayed on us a lot, and you know when I look back and, and when I was in Nam, all the stuff that he told us, it really helped us. A lot of stuff they told us in base training, it really helped us when we got in Nam. Mm -hmm. It really did. So did you fear him or respect him? I respect him. I wasn't scared of nothing. Okay. You know at that time I wasn't scared of nothing, nobody. But it's it's uh it just that I like to. I, and, you know, and and the guys that worked at Lockheed, one guy had been in there, and he got out. He got out, he, got, he was in the army, and he got out. He the one told me not to volunteer for anything. Mm -hmm. And he said, "Pay attention, Joe." He said, "All you got to do is pay attention. Pay attention to the sergeant, because they wouldn't tell you nothing wrong. Especially most of them had already been in the army, you know, in back. He said they wouldn't tell you anything wrong. So if you pay attention, you might be all right. You know. So don't get me wrong. Now I was nervous. Mm -hmm. I was real nervous. So other than that." I was okay. How would you compare life, you know, with hogs and you know, middle child brothers and sisters to, you know, and family to being, you know, being in basic camp? Uh, that's no comparison. I, I, you know, even though I was in basic training, I would rather, I would rather be at home. I would rather be at home with hogs and <laughs> stuff like that because, you know, it was. It was just me, and my two sisters, and my mom and dad, mm -hmm. and we was we were close knit family, you know. You know, I, you know, other than that, my my grandmother, my mama's mom and dad, it was that time they were living, and my dad, my dad, dad, my dad, mama was living. My dad, dad. I mean, when he was when he was when he died, he died when I was real small. But it was just a close knit family, and like I said. We didn't have that much, but we was close knit, mm -hmm. and and we are like that right now. I mean, my two sisters, my father is dead, my mom passed, mm -hmm. and but my two sisters, we are real close, real close. So, and there, there wasn't that closeness among the guys in the in basic basic. Or well, we was really it was different kind. Of, yeah, we was in base training. It was all right, but we knew we was always going to different places. You know, I was going to different companies, mm -hmm. you know, going to do different things, you know, but uh, in basic, we was, we was, in our company, we were pretty good. We was real close, you know, but we didn't get, you don't get real close to the guys till you get, get ready to go overseas. Because okay. that's the group you're going to Yeah, shoot. that's yeah. one that's you're going to have to look out for you. Mm -hmm. That's one you have to watch your back, mm -hmm. and you're going to watch his, you know. You're going to ask about social life. Social, mm -hmm. Yeah, and what about the social life? You talking about when I went? Well, this is a basic training, like the early days. Was well, no basic training. Well, well, no social, social life. life. <laughs> if it's this. No, it was nothing. Well, no, no. social life. Mm -hmm. Only thing you did on Sunday would go to church. You would they let you go to church on Sunday now? No, but other than that, that's it. That's a social there. Okay. So was everybody same religion? Were they all from no, different? They didn't go. Were they from the same? Were they all Southerners or? No, some was from North. No, okay. They uh they send different. People different places, you know, and a lot of from Carolinas and uh, this guy from New York, mm -hmm. in there, you know. So how was it learning, you know, them yeah. from somewhere else? Well, basically they about the same, you know, but it is talk a little, little funny, you know, right. stuff like that. But we call it talking funny, but basically they about the same, you know. Mm -hmm. They, uh, it's straight up, you know. So what about nicknames? Did you get your nickname in basic training, or it varies from where? Like, it all depends on our situations. Did you give some people some nicknames? Or? No, we did not. Yeah, we, we, the name was on, on, your, on your shirt. Uh -huh. The last name was on your shirt. And that's 
What? He was called. By, yeah, okay. That's what they call you. Okay. You know? So y'all didn't nickname each other, like, no. that's Chicago, or that's <laughs> no, Cali, or, no, no. you know, nothing like no. that. Everybody just went by the last yeah. name. But most part. people, you know, they, they will brag on their town they come from, you okay. know. Okay. You know. It's a lot of regional. Yeah, yeah. You know, from Chicago, from Chi-Town, you know, right, stuff like right. that. New York City, and stuff <laughs> like that. And we had a guy uh, from uh, named Rubio. Rubio, he from Arizona. A uh, Mexican guy from, from Arizona. And he used to fight all the time. He used to, boy, he used to fight all the time. He was, uh, we all mean this guy named Wardell Law. Used to always had to rescue him from fighting, you know, because we like to fight too. So <laughs> <laughs> at that particular time, you know, I was. Right. But uh, other than that, everything was great up. We, you know, we fought among each other. But when we got ready, when we went across, we went to Nam on the ship. It took us about twenty something days to get to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And uh, went over on the USS John Pope. John Pope. And uh, we stopped in the Philippine Island. And uh, I had said that if I ever get off this ship, I will never get on. No, I don't say I don't get in. I don't get on no boat now. I don't go fishing. <laughs> I don't go fishing, uh, and that's bad. But right now, guys, let's go fishing, man. I said I got a boat. I'm a bank man. <laughs> I can't catch from the bank, he won't get caught. <laughs> you know. So. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Wartime service. Uh, where did you serve? Wartime in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, when I came back to Vietnam, I was stationed at Hunter. Well, let's see. I went to uh, base at Fort, Fort Benny at Fort Eustis. Then I left Fort Eustis, went to Fort Seal. I left Fort Seal, went to Vietnam. In Vietnam, I came back to Hunter Airfield in Savannah. Okay. So where where was the location in Vietnam? You said what was the name of it? Uh, the base that or camp the camp that you Camp were Eagle. At? Camp Eagle. Yes, up near Osho Valley. Okay. You said that was near the North Vietnamese, Vietnamese North okay. Vietnamese South Vietnamese line up near DMZ. Oh, okay. Now what is DMZ? That's the line that separates the North from the South. Okay. North Vietnamese from South Vietnamese. So South that Vietnam. was a lot of the, the VC. That was like the the zone, like the yeah, war zone. Yeah. That's where every the main yeah. action the line is going. Scene. Yeah, it's probably it's a line. It's a map, <coughs> uh, and I thought I had a map that if you see the Vietnam map, it's got a line. It's called a DMZ, and it separates North Vietnamese from South Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. South North Vietnam from South Vietnam, mm -hmm. and it's called a DMZ. And we was just a little piece from there. Yeah. So you was up there. So you understand the war, why it was North versus South? Yeah, same thing. Okay. Korea. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. If you served abroad, what are some of the memories you have and the experiences? I mean, if I served... Well, well, I guess it's when you served abroad. So when you were in Vietnam, what were some of your experiences? Your memories and experiences, experiences. of being there. Oh man. Well, some of the things I I seen. It's not nice to talk about them, you know. Uh, it's a. Uh, Uh, it's it just uh, 